Okay, so if we now want to see the posterior wall, till now your concepts must be very clear. And that concept is based on you want to see something in the heart, you have to place cameras to see that particular thing. So do you guys believe that we would be placing those cameras by asking the patient to lie prone and we'll be place, placing those cameras on the back side? You do it or not? You don't do it. So actually, there are two ways. And actually, this is done. In reality, if you want to see the posterior wall, you have to place V7 here, posterior axillary line, V8 here, just beneath scapula and V9, again, just adjacent to it. V7, V8 and V9. These three cameras are placed on this side. These are known as V7, V8, V9. So if you want to see the posterior wall, V7, V8, V9, but usually we do not proceed that way and we simply see the mirror image of V1, V2. How you would be seeing the mirror image? I just need one paper here, empty paper. So how we would be seeing the mirror image? Like we are seeing lead V1 in a certain patient. You are seeing this lead V1 in a certain patient. Now I want to see the posterior wall. What I'll be doing here, I would just be tilting it that way. If I tilt that ECG, I'm holding that ECG paper like that. And now I'm tilting it that way. And now I'm seeing the posterior wall image. So when you are, when you want to see that posterior wall, you are supposed to look for the mirror image of V1, V2. Anybody, if I ever ask you this question, you would be saying either place V7, V8, V9 or mirror image of V1, V2. Fifth and last one, that is the right ventricular wall. Again, answer should be simple. If we want to see this wall, we have to place cameras here. As we place these chest lead camera V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, and V6, the same way we are supposed to place cameras on the right side. V1, V2 will remain at the same place, but we will be placing RV3, RV4, RV4 mid axillary line, RV5 anterior axillary line, and RV6 mid axillary line, as simple as that. Exactly the same way we place cameras on the left side, we'll be placing these cameras, leads, or in other words, electrodes. So what you will be doing on the patient, you will be pulling those electrodes, placed as V3, V4, V5 and V6 and you would be placing here and they will be named as RV3, RV4, RV5, RV6 and among those electrodes placed on the chest wall, RV3, RV5 and RV4, RV4 and RV5 will give us information about the right ventricular wall. So if somebody asks you this question, how to look for this right ventricular wall, you would be saying RV4, RV5 camera will be used. That's the total story of this lead thing and the logic behind it. And finally, a question arise in a naive mind, in a beginner's mind, that why even in a normal person, these lines which are there on the ECG paper are entirely different. In one lead, they are going above. In the other lead, they are going downward. Now, we are going to discuss about this picture. And your, this concept will be clear as well in the next four to five minutes. Just before that, jumping to that point, how ECG is formed, how waves are formed, that's a very simple thing. I have told you the current is going from SA node to AV node. During that process of current going to SA node and AV node, what happens? There is, there is a flat line, right? There is a flat line. And then what happens onward? As soon as the current flow from SA node to AV node, the two atria contract together. 
the two atria contract together and there is a waveform known as P wave. Then what happens next? Then as the current goes here, the current flows from AV node to bundle of phase. The next thing is then a small wave is formed. This is known as Q wave. This Q wave is basically <coughs> septal depolarization. So what has happened first? First there was atrial depolarization. Then there is septal depolarization. And then current goes from this AV node to bundle of phase. From bundle of phase to two bundles. Then to Purkinje fibers and both ventricles contract. As ventricles are big size. So you find that wave big size. And that is known as R wave. And then so basically there is there is ventricular depolarization. Then after ventricular depolarize, the ventricle repolarize as well. And this is known as T wave. As this comes back to the baseline, this is known as S wave. As this repolarizes, this is known as T wave. Again, a question may arise in your mind that if ventricle is repolarizing the same way atria should repolarize, same way septum should repolarize and those waves should be there. Actually, they would have been there. But as soon as they are depolarizing, exactly at the same time, ventricle is depolarizing. Atria and septum is repolarizing, exactly at the same time, ventricle is depolarizing. So the big size ventricular wave actually hide those waves inside. They are masked inside. You cannot see them, right? So that's the total story. This is the waveform. Two atria contract together, P wave, small size, so small P wave. Then septum depolarization, Q wave. Then R is due to ventricular depolarization, comes back, this is known as S wave and then there is ventricular repolarization. Now we are going to draw 12 leads. Why 12 leads look different? There is a logic behind, there is a reason underneath. Now listen to the sentence carefully. If the direction of flow of current, if the direction of flow of current will be towards the normal cardiac axis. The normal cardiac axis in this direction, why? Just recall the concept of vectors in physics. The current in human body is dissipating in all the directions. We were used to study that there are vectors and there is ultimately a resultant vector. So same way, the current is being dissipated to all the directions. There is a summation vector. There is a resultant vector. So there is a basically uh, the major chunk of current the maximum strength of current is in that in that direction from AV node uh, from SA node. Why is it so? So this is known as basically the normal cardiac axis, and there is a range of it. This starts from minus thirty degree, ends at one uh, ten degree. The whole portion is known as the cardiac axis area, normal cardiac axis area. Why is it so? See, I have already told you which wall of the heart is having bigger size, right wall or left? left. So as the current is flowing, the wall which has more strength and which is more thicker will be pulling it towards that particular side. If in some patient there is significant right ventricular hypertrophy, what happens? The axis move to this direction and we call them that the patient is having right axis. So in this patient, we are having normal axis and if left ventricle hypertrophies, that axis will move like that, resultant axis. And we call it left axis. So the ultimately the axis thing is based on that concept as well. So this is the this is the position of the normal cardiac axis. Now remember the sentence. If the direction of flow of current is towards the normal cardiac axis in any lead, in any lead, if direction of flow of current is towards the normal cardiac axis, the deflection produced by that fine instrument stylus over the paper will all be positive. Positive means above the baseline. So I draw one lead. Tell me yourself that you are seeing all these leads. Which lead is in the direction of this normal cardiac axis? Lead number two. So when you draw lead number two, it looks like P wave positive, QRS positive, T wave positive. Now if I ask you do you find any limb lead here, which is exactly, almost exactly opposite to it? AVR. That one, AVR. So how should it look like? 
AVR is all negative. That's the logic behind these different shapes of 12 lead. Now tell me the name of another lead, limb leads. I'm just right now focusing on limb lead. Tell me the name of another limb lead, which is <coughs> very near to this uh, cardiac axis, normal cardiac axis lead, lead to this AVF. So AVF will nearly be of same shape, P, Q, R, S, T. <coughs> now tell me the name of the leads, which almost limb lead, again focusing on limb lead, which is almost lying in the center. In the center means if this lead is at 60 degree, in a 360 degree circle, if another lead will be there, which will be exactly opposite to it, at what degree it's going to be? It will be here. So it will be 180 degree away from it. There is some lead which is falling right in the center between these two leads and that is AV. L. So AVL lead is right in the center. So when we'll be drawing this AVL, the QRS complex is halfway up, halfway down. And the rest of the two leads are now left. We are left behind which two, two leads are there. Lead number three and lead number this one. One is relatively near to this two. Three is relatively near to this two in comparison with AVL. So the so the angle, if it is there, we would be seeing these leads as QRS complex slightly more positive, less negative. And the last now six leads, which are which we are going to draw now are chest leads. I mean, you have understood the concept. If some lead is in the direction of cardiac axis, it will be positive. Away from the cardiac axis, it will be negative. Going more away, 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 it will be more negative, negative, negative. Relatively close, QRS will be positive. And the six leads are based on the same principle. Now I just tell you where the V6 lie. V6 lie exactly in the direction, same direction of this cardiac axis. So here the V6 lies. So among these six chest leads, which one will be having positive deflection? Obviously V6. V6 will be like it. V6, all positive. V5, mostly positive, very small negative. V4, QRS negative is there. V3, half positive, half negative. V2, more negative and less positive. And V1, almost negative. The concept is same. If the direction of flow of current is towards normal cardiac axis, all positive. Opposite, all negative. So that's the total story of these 12 leads, why they look different. At the end of this session, remember, you guys need to carry four very important take home points from this whole discussion. Most important one is lead is like a camera. Second, please, you should be able to draw this whole 360 degree circle. And you should be knowing in which multiple directions these leads are. Third, third is then different walls of the heart. What leads represent different walls of the heart? So you should have a very good concept of this thing as well. Lateral wall one AVL and sorry, the lead that is left behind is V5, V6. I told you V1, V2, V3, V4 was looking towards anteroceptal and V5, V6 is on the lateral side. So lateral wall is also represented by V5, V6. Lateral wall 1 AVL, V5, V6. Inferior wall 2, 3 AVF. Anteroceptal wall V1, V2, V3, V4. Right ventricular wall RV4, RV5. Then posterior wall either V7, V8, V9 or mirror image of V1, V2. So the concept of walls, the 360 degree circle, angles and leads, how these 12 leads look like and the last thing lead is like a camera. Remember these concepts, the next EC, in the next EC sessions we will be discussing few uh, abnormalities related to the ECG and hopefully in four sessions we will be able to come to an end related to all the ECGs. Thank you very much.